Good morning and welcome to St. Mark's Old Hall for a word for Wednesday. It's good to be sharing with you this morning. We'll be hearing today about Jesus, the Good Shepherd, the Gate, and the One who brings us abundant life. So let us come before God in prayer. Lord God, you are our Saviour and King, our Master and Friend, our Shepherd and our Guide. Wherever we go, you are with us. Wherever we stray, you seek us out. Whenever we call, you hear us. You are our promise and our hope, our place of rest and peace our security and our sureness. Whoever we are, you accept us. Whatever we do, you love us. Whenever we fall, you lift us up. Lord God, we come today from different places, different lives, different situations, with different concerns and different dreams. And yet we come as one, a people of shared faith in a God who shared all. And so we praise you, Lord God, that you have risen from the dead to fulfill your promise to all creation. We praise you that you have gifted us your spirit as a companion and guide. We praise you that you have chosen us as your people to build your kingdom here on earth. Gracious God, our path in life does not always lead us into quiet, calm places of caring and compassion for others. Our journey often takes us off the beaten track and into the difficult terrain of selfishness and anger. Our progress is often slowed by fear and anxiety. And yet you remain at our side, Lord, to comfort and provide, reminding us of your promise that all is forgiven for all time. And so we praise you, Lord, that you bless us anew each day with your grace and goodness, that you open doors to fresh opportunities, and that you lead us by the hand to a place we can call home. Take us from here, refreshed in our journey with you and with one another, that we might love you more and follow you more closely. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our reading this morning is from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 10. And Colin is going to read it for us. The first reading is from John, chapter 10, the parable of the shepherd. Jesus said, I am telling you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who goes in through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. The sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. When he has brought them out, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow someone else. Instead, they will run away from such a person because they do not know his voice. Jesus told them this parable, but they did not understand what he meant. So Jesus said again, I am telling you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All others who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever comes in by me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only in order to steal kill and destroy. I have come in order that you might have life, life in all its fullness. Amen. If you were with us on Sunday, you'll remember I was making reference to the literary device of a pivotal moment, an aha moment on which the plot turns. Today I want to mention two other key features of a good book, the cast of characters, which also applies in the case of a film but the visual pictures created by the author for his reader's enjoyment and perhaps education. The skill of picturing a story in your mind's eye is an important one for an avid reader, a pleasure often removed if one has seen the film of the book before reading the book itself. 
Indeed, for myself, I prefer not to watch a film of a book I've enjoyed because the characters often do not fit with the image that's inside my head. The example of the film Jack Reacher, one of Lee Child's thriller novels, is one I think I've used before. Jack Reacher is a tall, dark, well-built man. And to my bemusement, and that of many others, he was portrayed by Tom Cruise in the film. Now, I'm told that Tom did a good job, but it was beyond my imagination how Cruise could pull off the tall, imposing presence of Reacher. So I didn't go and see the film. Anyway, back to the plot of our gospel reading, which is a varied cast of characters and some intriguing visual imagery. The passage Colin has read for us is richly layered with extended and perhaps mixed metaphors. But the end result is a passage where the various elements help fill in our picture of who Jesus is and who we are in relation to him. Jesus is talking to the crowd, who on that day consisted of both disciples and Pharisees. For the story comes straight after Jesus has healed the man who was blind from birth. It was one of the encounters that we explored during our Lent journey. Now Jesus is trying to explain to the crowd who he is, and is using the metaphor of a shepherd, his sheep and the sheepfold, a familiar scene which should not have required too much imagination from his listeners. In the Middle East, Shepherding is somewhat different from what we know in Scotland. Not for them, flocks of sheep grazing unattended in pastures of lush grass, surrounded perhaps by dry-stained dikes or electric fences, keeping them safe. In the United Kingdom, when we see a shepherd in a field, it's often him and his dogs, often moving the sheep from behind, perhaps now aided by a quad bike. In the Middle East, then and now, the sheep are kept in sheep pens overnight to keep them safe, guarded by a paid gatekeeper or watchman. It's his job to keep the wild animals and the sheep rustlers at bay. And during the day, the shepherd leads his flock out, often walking miles with them to find grass to graze. Anyone who has been to the Holy Land or to a similar Middle Eastern country has perhaps seen the shepherds leading their sheep, calling to them, whistling to them, leading them amid the avid scrubland to find grazing. This is the type of shepherd that Jesus was referring to. But firstly, Jesus starts off by explaining who he is not. He says he's not a thief or a bandit. He's not the one who climbs furtively into the sheep pen wishing harm on the flock and working only for his own gains. Rather, Jesus is the shepherd of the flock, the one who enters by the gate, known to the gatekeeper who lets him enter through and known to the sheep who recognize his voice and follow him. The shepherd knows his sheep. He knows their needs and he will attend to them. His sole purpose is to see to the safety and the well-being of the flock. He is willing to lay down his life for his sheep. He provides protection, freedom from fear, and he leads them to pastures to nourish them. In return, the sheep know their shepherd. They know he will care for them, that he will lead them, he will protect them, and he will provide sustenance for them. And so they're happy to follow him, to heed his voice, and not to flee as they would from the voice of a stranger. The imagery of David, the shepherd king, and of God as the shepherd of Israel are examples Jesus' audience should have been familiar with from their own scriptures, particularly from the Psalms and from Isaiah. But we are told in the passage that they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus tries again, extending his use of metaphors from the same scenario. And he uses one of his I am sayings. He says, I am the gate of the sheep. 
perhaps one of the less well-known I ams, but one of the seven nonetheless. The gate is the way of entry, the proper way in, the way in and out for those authorised to use it. There is no bypassing this point of entry. In Jesus' analogy, whoever enters through the gate, Jesus says, will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The flock is the company of Jesus' followers. Jesus is the way into the fellowship of God's holy people. Those who enter through the gate will receive abundant life, life where their needs are met by the good shepherds who provide shelter and guidance and sustenance. In John's Gospel, Jesus says he is the water of life. He is the bread of life. He is the light of the world, and here he is, the shelter in the sheepfold. He meets all physical needs. Jesus is our shepherd too. We are his sheep, and Jesus offers us the comfort of his voice, the comfort of the presence of the good shepherd. For the sheep, the presence of the shepherd is reassuring. And so it is for us, even when there is danger or confusion, even when life is turned upside down like it is during this coronavirus pandemic. It's reassuring to know that Jesus is our shepherd and is looking out for us. Jesus says, I am the gate. I am the way to God. I will show you God's love. I will protect you. I will keep you safe. I will wrap my arms around you. The relationship of Jesus and his disciples is one of intimacy and trust. He calls to us to follow him. He knows what we need and he will protect us. He will lead us to life itself, abundant life, life in the very essence of God the Father Almighty. Jesus embodies God's love for the world, God's life for the world. He shows us how much God cares for his people. However, we have a responsibility too. As sheep, we're required to differentiate the voice of the stranger from the voice of the shepherd. We need to identify the voice of the stranger who calls us to follow him. The false one who promises to show us the truth of life for the cost of a book or DVD. The false shepherd who promises peace and prosperity, wealth and health to all who follow his interpretation of God. Those who guarantee a fast track to wealth and an end to financial problems. A plan that seems too good to be true and usually is the much longed for promise of rapid waste, weight gain well sorry the much longed promise of rapid weight loss for minimal effort or no effort at all these appeals by wolves in sheep's clothing or perhaps in shepherd's clothing may procure wealth for those who promote them but offer despair and deception for those who follow and for whom life is still full of struggles. Jesus offers abundant life to those who hear his voice, and so we cultivate an ear to hear him. Through the disciplines of worship and Bible study and prayer, we learn to recognize the voice of the Good Shepherd, who calls us to abundant life, to a life of light and love, and eternal life. But this is not just a promise for the future. We're called to an abundant life here and now, even in this time of lockdown. For abundant life means a lifetime of knowing Jesus, of knowing his voice and the security he offers. We're called to share in the life of a community, to be kept safe inside the sheepfold and called to a life that abounds with meaning and value and to a life that continues after death.
But what does it mean for followers of Jesus today in our current context to hear his voice and to have his gift of freedom and protection? Well, I believe that Jesus gives us the freedom to be thankful for what we have, the freedom to praise him, for he is good, the freedom from fear, because we can come to him with our concerns, and the freedom to know that he knows our needs and hears our prayers even before we even ask. And yes, for most of us, the freedom to walk out for our daily exercise following the two-meter rule, or perhaps only to walk around our houses. But before us is the promise of abundant life. Life may be restricted just now, but somewhere down the road we will experience again the abundant life that means we can meet up with family and friends. We can greet people with a hug. We can go out for a meal. But let's not forget that we have an abundant life here and now. Abundant life lived with the protection of our Heavenly Father in the heavenly sheepfold. A life filled with the blessings of our Saviour Jesus Christ and the grace and the mercy of his love. So how can our lives better reflect what God has done for us? How can they reflect the presence of the living Christ in our midst? We need to listen to the voice of the shepherd to find out where he is, to find out where he wants us to go, to find out what he is calling us to do. For abundant life is for sharing. We live in the grace and the love of God which we have received in abundance and which we can share with others in this time of lockdown and beyond. Amen. Let us come to God with our prayers for ourselves and for others. Let us pray. Lord, in a world when many search for the protection you offer, for a shepherd to welcome them in and to sit by their side, we bring our prayers for others. We pray for those who wonder where their next meal will come from. And we pray for food justice to become a priority in our world. And we pray in this time of coronavirus for the staff and volunteers of the food banks and those they're helping at this time. We pray for those who wonder when and if they will ever wake in the morning to peace. And we pray for an end to fighting. And we give thanks for the courageous role of peacekeepers. We pray for those subject to domestic violence and pray for peace and protection for them too. We pray for those who wonder when they might be paid a fair price for their labours. And we pray for fair trade practices to become the norm. We pray for those who wonder when they might be fully able to support their family. And we pray for wages that are fair and able to support individuals and families. And in this time of coronavirus, we pray for those who are self-employed and have no money coming in and no idea when they will next work. And we pray for those who are furloughed, but who do not know when they might return to work, or if the business they work for will survive past lockdown. We pray for those who wonder when they might see their family again, for those refugees who are far from home, and for those who are stuck at home, self-isolating because of coronavirus and other health issues. We pray for all those who wonder where their help might come from. We pray for communities that mirror your love and your care. And for all looking for the shelter of a shepherd, we pray that your presence might be known. Lord, for all these people and situations we pray, in your precious name. Amen. 
to the mercy and protection of God we commit you. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and your children for an hour, forever, and for eternity. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning. Our prayer group meets this evening at 7 p.m. by Zoom. Please contact Irene if you wish to join in or pray alongside us anyway. I will be back here on Sunday when we'll continue to learn more about the early Christian church as told in the Book of Acts. Stay safe. Goodbye.